time to refactor our counter challenge a little bit. Obviously the code we've written now isn't very dry, so it repeats itself quite a lot. And we essentially pass the same function three times. So we essentially use the same function for increment count by 10, by five, and by one. And we're just passing in a hard coded value. This is not very good, not very clean, not very dry code. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an increment count function, and then we're gonna pass the value into that function. Let's go ahead and implement that function now. I'm gonna call it increment count. Of course, it's a function, and I'm actually gonna pass in a value this time. This value is going to be one, five, or 10, or whatever number you want. So we're gonna get away from hard coding in these values. And then of course, gonna use this dot set state. And we're gonna increment the count by this dot state dot count plus the value we pass in. So all this method is gonna do is replace these three methods here and get the value when it's called. So whenever this method is called, it's gonna have the value passed in. So when we click on this button here, it's gonna get the value 10. And when we click on this one here, it's gonna get the value one. And then of course, we're gonna increment the count by that value. Nice and simple. This obviously isn't gonna work just yet, as we need to use this method on the click events. So let's go ahead and delete the by one. So this is now just increment count. But this itself isn't gonna work. Obviously, you're not passing in a value yet. So what we actually need to do is bind this function to the component itself and then pass in the value. If you're not familiar with bind, the bind method creates a new function. And when this new function is called, it has the keyword this set to the provided value. And then you pass in any arguments you want afterwards. For this particular case, the keyword this is our component. So whenever this function increment count gets called, we're gonna pass in the component and then the value. So this means that whenever the increment count method gets called, the keyword this inside that component is gonna to point to the component itself. And this is gonna allow us to pass in the value as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and then check it out in the browser. So we've got our component here, and if we click five, we get the same result, and if we click 10, we get the same result. But if we click one, we get a constructor logged out here. Now this is the component. You can see it's got, it's gonna make it a bit larger. You can see it's got state, which has the count property. You can see it's got props, which is empty. And of course, we're actually passing in the value here rather than hard coding it in. So what we could do is make this a thousand. Save that, head on over back to the browser. Now it still says one, but it should increment the count by 1000. And there we go. So what we can do now is implement this for the other two buttons as well. Let's go ahead and delete the by five and bind to this and then pass in the value, which is five and do that for 10 as well. So again, we're binding it to the component and we're passing in the value. We can go ahead and delete the three increment count by methods and just have the single increment count method now. And we'll get rid of the console.log. So we head on back over to the browser, refresh, increment by one, increment by five, and by 10. 
So that's just a little bit of a refactor. Obviously, there's still a lot more we can do with this refactor. You know React is all about reusable components. And you might notice that we're using three buttons here. So I think we can make that into a single component and then pass that component into the counter challenge component. But to do that, we need to learn about stateless functional components, which we're going to cover in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below. Send me a tweet at code with Tim or send me an email codewithtim at gmail.com